kill her. I might as well just say it. We were trying to kill her. Morgan Geyser explained why she and Anissa Wire stabbed their sixth grade classmate after a sleepover. She said they feared a fictional internet ghoul, Slender Man, they believed was real. The victim, Peyton Leitner, survived 19 stab wounds. The now teen suspects will stand trial as adults. Tonight, Morgan's mother tells Nick Bohr how she's fighting for her daughter. Nearly three years have passed since the so-called Slender Man stabbing attack on a Waukesha sixth grader by her two classmates. In some ways, it is a distant memory, but suspect Morgan Geyser's mom says it's not because of the time that's passed. When Morgan remembers the incident, it's like remembering something that someone else did. She wasn't, um, she wasn't in control of her brain at the time of the event. Um, and she's, she said it's like remembering someone else's memories. Morgan was diagnosed with schizophrenia a few months after the assault. Her mom Angie is convinced the illness was responsible for the stabbing of Morgan's friend Peyton Leitner. That wasn't Morgan who did that. This, um, this wouldn't have happened if not for Morgan's untreated mental illness. It never occurred to you that she was dangerous? No, of course not. No, I mean, if we had had any indication that Morgan had a serious mental illness, we would have gotten her treatment sooner. But unfortunately, no, we didn't know until after after the incident. Angie Geyser later learned that disturbing drawings were found hidden in Morgan's room and tells me she's asked Morgan why she hid them. Her standard answer when I ask her why she didn't tell us about things is because we would have done something about it. So why didn't you tell us you were afraid of Slender Man? Because you would have done something about it. Why didn't you tell us you were hearing voices? Because you would have done something about it. The Geysers shared these recent photos of Morgan at the Secure State Mental Hospital where they visit several times a week. They had to fight to get her placed there after she spiraled in juvenile detention. She deteriorated pretty seriously and um, she self-harmed and ended up on a uh, suicide watch. Morgan is now a patient in the state mental facility after spending the first year and a half in juvenile detention with no medication for her by then diagnosed schizophrenia. We sit at a table together and, and we, we talk and sometimes she brings a game for us to play. Um, she'll bring artwork or writing that she's been working on and she'll show that to me. This is Morgan's most recent report card. And as you can see, she got straight A's. And she's aware of everything that she's missing out on. She misses her old life. She misses her friends. She misses Peyton. Does she ever talk about Slender Man or anything like that? No, 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 that doesn't come up. Angie Geyser reveals she's had absolutely no contact with the victim, Peyton, or her parents since the day of the attack. If you could say anything to them, I mean, have you, th you must have thought about that many times, what you might say. And I'm just, I'm so sorry for what she went through. I'm so sorry for what Peyton went through. Um, I would want them to know that Morgan is sorry too. Morgan has a lot of remorse for what happened. Her October trial will determine if Morgan's mental illness was responsible for the attack. Her mom can only hope the jury will find mental health treatment is more fitting than prison. I wouldn't be afraid to have her in our home. My goal is the same today as it was on, on day one, and, and that's to bring my daughter home. Nick, such a powerful interview and a part of the story that we, we haven't heard before. So why is she talking now? Well, she says in the past she was afraid of saying the wrong thing, but now with the trial getting so close, she said she wants to be a vocal advocate for her daughter. And we know that you've spoken recently with a family spokesperson for the victim. Right, and that spokesman says viewers really need to remember the seriousness of the crime, that it was premeditated, he says, and vicious. He says there's one victim, Peyton Leitner, and she's overcome the attack now, he says, and thriving in high school. I should also add Morgan's co-defendant, Anissa Wire, is also pleading not guilty by reason of mental disease. And they'll have separate trials. Right, those are coming up in the fall. Angie Geyser's holding out hope, of course, that that trial will mean continued mental health treatment for her daughter, not prison. And we'll cover both trials every step of the yeah. way. Nick, thank you.